الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The way I plan to speak about the topic bi-idhnillahi al-kareem is in the following points. The first point inshallah ta'ala is I'm going to define what tadabbur is. And I'm also going to speak about the commands that have come regarding pro and pondering on the Qur'an. And the third point that I'm going to speak about is arkanu tadabbur, the pillars in which tadabbur stands on. And the fourth one is al-alaqatu bayna maqasid al-Qur'an wa tadabburu fiha. The relationship between knowing the objectives of the Qur'an and pondering on the Qur'an. And last but not least, I will be speaking about وَسَائِلُ tadabbur, The means in which if a person takes, he can ponder on the Qur'an. And all of these points, when I mention them, I will be mentioning how the Salaf were in regards to this particular point. So my topic, inshaAllah ta'ala, is more generic and more comprehensive than the title that was given to it. What does tadabbur mean? And I always like the, us to give importance to definitions. Because if you don't understand the definition, if you don't understand the definition, then you can't come with the thing. In order to come with the reality of something, what do you need to do? Is you have to understand it first. What does at tadabbur mean in the language? At tadabbur in the language, it, it comes from the word at dubur the back, the ending. The Arabs, they say, meaning the back the tail of the riding beast so from this we can realize that tadbir and tadabbur in a matter is another of al amri looking at the ending of this matter it's basically when you look at the final ending of a matter so you're on your point you're not looking at what it is right now but what is the effects that come from it after and exact and etc this is what tadabbur is in the language. In the istilahi meaning, so there's two terms before I go to the istilahi meaning, there are two terms generally people kind of confuse with one another. What's the difference between a tadabbur and a tafakkur? Tadabbur is looking at something based on the final ending that it's going to lead to. It's another fi awaqib al umur. Looking at the imata from its final conclusions. Like in a tafakkur is another it is to look at something with evidence it's when you look at something based on evidence that's what tafakkur means what does it mean in the shari meaning when the sharia ah commands you to ponder what does it mean it means what we just mentioned it's another of awaqib al umur it's to look at the finding and ending of a matter and that's not it and the effects have to show on your limbs and that's the additional meaning that the Sharia ah added to what tadabbur is, and we're gonna we're going to expand on that later. So it's not just looking at the Quran and saying, "Wow, Subhanallah!" This verse told us this, and just leaving it out there. Rather, it is that the understanding and the benefits that you've taken it starts to manifest and show on your limbs. So I hope now we know what a tadabbur is. We're now going to move on to the second point, which is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He commanded us to ponder in the Quran. Allah said in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not ponder on the Quran? أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Or are there locks on their hearts? Also Allah says in another ayah, أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْلَ Have they not pondered on the speech? أَمْ جَاءَهُمْ Or has it come to them? مَا لَمْ يَأْتِ آبَاءَهُمُ الْأَوَّلِينَ That which has not come to their forefathers. Also Allah says in another ayah, كِتَابٌ أَيْ بُكْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ Which we sent down إِلَيْكَ to you Muhammad مُبَارَكٌ This book is full of blessings and it's full of barakah Why? لِيَدَّبَّرُ آيَاتِ So you can ponder on its verses وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And those who are wise and the intellectual people can also take a lesson from it Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says in another ayah أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا أَفَلَا يَتَدَّبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not ponder on the Quran? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا And if they were to receive this Qur'an from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would have found a lot of contradiction in it. 
This Quran doesn't have a contradiction in it because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Imam Al-Ajurri rahimahullah, he says in his kitab, Akhlaq Hamalat Al-Quran, a powerful statement I'm going to read on you. He says, Al-Ala Tarawna, do you not see? Rahimakumullah, may Allah have mercy on you. Ila Mawlakum, to, to, can you not see? May Allah have mercy on each and every one of you. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing. The way Allah is urging His creation to ponder on His speech. Anyone who ponders on Allah's speech, this is the benefits that come out of it. That person is going to know Allah. If you ponder on Allah's speech, you're going to know Him. You know why? There is nothing better to explain Allah to you than Allah Himself. So he's telling you about himself. Pondering on the Quran is the greatest way to know him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the person starts to gain knowing the supreme power and ability and strength Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. So you start seeing that person not sinning in private. It starts, it starts to affect him. And the person starts to know how Allah has bestowed never-ending mercy on us. How kind and generous he is to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَرَفَ And the person also comes to know مَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ فَرْضِ عِبَادَتِهِ The things that are obligatory on him to come with. He starts to know it. Because he now is connected to the Qur'an. فَأَلْزَمَ نَفْسَهُ الْوَاجِبَةِ So that person sticks to the obligatory things. He makes sure he comes with it. فَحَذِرَ مِمَّا حَذَّرَهُ مَوْلَاهُ الْكَرِيمِ And the person stays and withholds from that which his Lord prohibits him from and tells him to stay away from. And he also pushes himself to that which his Lord pushes him towards. And Imam al ajurriyu said, anyone who these characteristics are his characteristics. When he reads the Quran. And when he, and when he hears the Quran from, from other than himself. Anyone whose characteristics is like this. This person, for him the Quran is a cure. فَاسْتَغْنَى بِلَا مَالٍ He becomes rich even though he has no money. وَعَزَّ بِلَا عَشِيرَةٍ And he becomes honorable even if he has no family members, even if he doesn't have friends. وَأَنِسَ بِمَا يَسْتَوْحِشُ مِنْهُ غَيْرُهُ He finds company when other people are lonely. He finds company because the Qur'an gives him company. وَكَانَ هَمْهُ عِنْدَ تِلَاوَتِهِ السُّورَةِ إِذَا افْتَتَحَا His aspiration is the continuation of the recitation of the Qur'an. This is what he asks himself. He says to himself, when, when am I going to take a lesson from this verse? So whenever he's reading the Quran, and every time he continuously carries on reading, he says to himself, when am I going to take a lesson from this verse? And his objective is not going to be, when am I going to finish the surah? Rather his ultimate goal is, when he comes across a verse, he doesn't understand what it means. He says, when am I going to understand what this means? When am I going to know what Allah is saying to me here? When am I going to withhold from what I'm doing? When am I going to take these verses as a lesson? Because he believes reciting these verses is a form of ibadah for him. And a ibadah cannot occur with heedlessness. Wallahu al And Allah is the one who is able to make you one who attains this. So this is what comes with pondering on the Quran. And Allah commanded us in many places to ponder. What are the pillars in which pondering stands on? The first one is التفكر, to think. والتفهم, and it's to understand. The first pillar in which at tadabbur stands on is at tafakkur, is to think. And at tafahum, trying to make yourself understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're reading a verse, what does it mean? What is Allah trying to say to me? And as we said before, what does it mean thinking? It means anadaru fi aqibati ma ya'ulu ilayhi hadhihi al-umur. You look at all of these matters which are mentioned in this verse. What's the final conclusion of it? If you don't take it, what's going to be the final abode for you? 
If you take it on board and you do it, what's your final abode? If you leave it off, what's your final abode? You ponder and you think. This will increase in your heart at tasdiq believing in Allah. Wal ma'rifah, recognizing Him. And it will also increase in your heart at ta'zimu li amri Allahi, honoring and venerating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. Number two, the second pillar is husulu athari dhalik. That the effects of these verses that you're reading, it shows on your al-jawarih, your limbs. It's not just you read a verse, you read an ayah, but it becomes something that your body starts to implement. You become a trustworthy person. You become a sincere person. You become an honorable person. It changes you. The day you become the people of the Quran, you're changed. You're a totally different individual. Walidalika the Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam in the hadith Al Imam Muslim and Bukhari both narrated fi Sahihima min hadith Abi Musa al Ashari Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu that the Prophet said, Mathalil Mathalul Mu'mini, the likes of a mu'min is Aladi Yakra ul Qur'ana, the believer who reads the Quran, Ka Mathalil Utrujja, he is like a citrus. Rihuha Tayyibud, its fragrance is nice. وَطَعْمُهَا طَيِّبٌ And the taste is very nice. وَمَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ And as for the believer who doesn't read the Qur'an, كَمَثَلِ التَّمْرَةِ He's like a date. لَا رِيحَ لَهَا He has no, the date doesn't have no smell. وَطَعْمُهَا حُلٌ But this taste is very nice. So the believer who doesn't read the Qur'an, he tastes good, like the date, he's good. But there's no fragrance to him. Like there's no fragrance to the date. وَمَثَلُ munafiq And the hip hypocrite. الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ Who reads the Qur'an. مَثَلُ الْرَيْحَانَةِ He's like a tree that smells nice. But رِيحُهَا طَيِّبٌ Its fragrance is nice. وَطَعْمُهَا مُرٌ And its taste is very bitter. وَمَثَلُ الْمُنَافِقِ And the hypocrite. الذي لا يقرأ القرآن who doesn't read the Quran is like the hanzala the hanzala it has no taste and it has no smell to it so this hadith what does it teach us that the believer him reciting the Quran and reading it comes for him two things a good smell and the taste being good well in that many people they haven't even understood what is meant by reciting the Quran? Mujahid ibn Jabrin, when he came to the ayah, يَتْلُولَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Because the hadith mentioned they read the Quran, right? What does it read, mean reading the Quran? يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ They implement it. حَقَّ عَمَلِهِ The way it should be implemented. So the Quran is not مُجَرَّدُ الْفَاظ It's not just mere words that are read. But it becomes actions and things which a person does. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Inna we, the companions, صعب علينا. It was very hard on us. Hiv the alfad al Quran, memorizing the words of the Quran. وسهل علينا العمل عمل به. And implementing the Quran was very easy for us. We, the companions, memorizing the Quran was very hard. The wordings, but memorizing its boundaries was very easy for us. وإن من بعدنا those who are going to come after us. It's going to be very easy for them to memorize the wordings. And it's going to be very hard for them to implement what's in the Quran. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Kan al-fadlu the virtue in the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was not in the memorization of the Quran and a surah. Rather, it is, was in their virtue, the, the one who memorized it and implemented the meanings in it. So when we say in the hadith, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ The example of a believer who reads the Qur'an here, what does it mean? حَفِظَ قَرَأَ حُرُوفَهُ He reads the wordings and he also comes with the implementation. And that's the haqiqah and the reality of what? At tadabbur That's the reality of tadabbur Now I'm going to mention the relationship between the maqasid of the Qur'an and the tadabbur. 
the objectives that the Quran set and also pondering what did I say pondering was pondering is observing the final ending of what every verse is right so every verse in the Quran is categorized in one of these Either that verse is taqreeru tawheed wa umur al aqida that verse is establishing tawheed or it is establishing aqida number 1 the second qadiyya asasiyya in which the verse is putting and it's laying down is taqreeru al ahkam al shar'iyya it's placing jurisprudential rulings ahkam halal and haram and amr and nahi and the third one is Dhikrul Qisasi Mentioning story of Anbiya is sabiqeen the previous prophets and the messengers that came Wa akhbar al-kuffari wal mushrikeen and the stories of the disbelievers and the pagans and the polytheists and how their situation was with their prophets and their messengers So when the person is reading the Quran and he comes to the ayats that talk about at-tawheed al-aqeedah he reads observing how Allah is talking about it when it comes to the verses that are talking about al-ahkam al-shar'i al-halal wal haram al-amr wal nahi he ponders because he knows what is being told to him here is that this is halal he needs to submit and follow he also ponders on the places which is being told to him that it's haram to stay away from and when it comes to the verses that are talking about the stories of the previous prophets and the messengers he looks at it wisely and he observes it and many of the people if you look the reason why they are unable to ponder on the Quran is that they don't know the maqasid and the objectives of the Quran and these are the three things that the Quran talks about these are the three foundation in which the Quran is dealing with for example when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about umur al-aqeedah he says قُلْ هُوَ say to the Muhammad who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al the one who has the ability ala an yab'ath alaykum for him to send out onto you adaban min fawqikum a punishment from beneath you aw min tahti arjulikum or to from above you or from beneath your feet aw yalbisakum shi'a or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes you into groups wa yudhiqa ba'dakum ba'sa ba'd and part of a group makes the other group taste pain and agony. Unzur, Allah says, ponder. Kayfa nusarriful ayat. The way we are changing the verses for you. One time we're talking to you in what? Dalalatul mafum. Dalalatul mutabaka. Dalalatul tadammun. We're talking to you directly, indirectly. We're changing the ways that we're approaching every speech. Why? La'allahum yafqahun. So the people can ponder and understand and take on board what is, what is being said to them. So when Allah spoke about this matter related to Aqeedah, automatically what did He tell us? Ponder and think. This ayah tells us that the Ummah are going to be divided. And Allah mentions here that the people are going to be divided into groups and the groups are going to make each other pay, taste pain. This group is going to be making takfir on the other group or tabdi' or tadi' kafir and it's going to make people taste pain and agony hasn't that happened? the verse when it came down the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he begged Allah, he supplicated قُلْ هُوَ الْقَاهِرُ قَادِرُ Allah is the one who is able عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ from above you the Prophet said اللَّهُمَّ أَعُوذُ بِوَجْهِكْ Oh Allah, I seek refuge in your face don't do this to my ummah and it was given to the Prophet Oh, min tahti or beneath your feet, and the Prophet said, "Oh Allah, don't make my ummah go through this." And Allah accepted it from him. Oh, yalbisakum shi'an, and Allah breaks you into groups. Wa yudika ba'dakum ba'sa ba'd. The Prophet he said, "I asked Allah, and Allah told me He's not going to give me this one." The ummah have been divided into groups, sahih, and they've made each other taste pain. So this is an ayah related to the matters of aqidah. A person will ponder and he will think and it will make him understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about, for example, ahkamul halal wal haram. 